Hello, I'm Nina Murray, and today I will read for you an excerpt from my translation of Oksana Zabushko's epic novel, The Museum of Abandoned Secrets. The novel is uh, long, ambitious, wonderfully complex, and I hope that this reading gives you a taste of Oksana's wonderful writing in it. This cannot be replayed. She cannot delete it from her computer. She cannot set the clock back to time before. She cannot say to the darkness where she cannot see either the director or the cameraman, I'm sorry, I misspoke there. Let's go back and record again from this point here. Yes, it is. Well, hello then, she thinks. A single breath of her entire being and instantly feels terrified. Who are you? Somewhere there, inside her, in an invisible cranny, in a self-propellant churn of her hot cells. Are they actually hot? What is the temperature, pressure, the relative moisture of air in there? Is there even air? Still no one. Still not an existence. No machine can find you, but you already are. You are already there, here. Like looking into the wrong end of the telescope, a dizzying flight, an immensely long spiraling tunnel with a golden speck of light at the far end, and coming from there, a moving black dot. She can't see its shape yet from this far away, but that's just a matter of time. Its approach is irreversible, its velocity known. Two red vertical lines on the narrow strip of the test stick. The first portrait of a future person. Of her child. Ripened. The word surfaces in her memory. Something dropped there like a seed from what seems like a thousand years ago. No one speaks like that anymore. Ripened. Who spoke like that? Grandma Tatiana? And right away the next frame, scorchingly vivid as if it's just been digitally remastered, where does it all lie hidden in what vaults? Little Darichka, Odarka, as her grandmother called her, and she didn't like it, pouted at grandma, how crude. Listens, with a massive, massive down blanket pulled all the way over her head. When you dive under a down blanket, you must tuck your feet under you right away and pull your nightdress over them so as not to lose the warmth. The sheets are stiff and cold, the bed boundless like a snowy desert. In daytime, a fluffed-up pyramid of sundry pillows towers on its expanse, pillowcases decorated with strips of embroidery and openwork, whose patterns are also imprinted in her memory, as they were on her cheek when she woke up in the morning. You could run your fingers over every stitch. The doors are open from the dark around her, a tunnel, to where the fire glows in the stove, where they are talking. Her mom, she is the one who brought Darichka to visit grandmother, Grandma Tatiana, and Aunt Lucia. Grandma talks loudly, as rural people unaccustomed to whispering so as not to wake someone else usually do, and mom keeps shushing at her. Every time she does, all three peer from their end of the tunnel into the room with the enormous wooden bed where Darichka has hidden. Then Grandma Tatiana inquires, loud as a church bell, is she asleep? And the conversation resumes at the same volume as before. Darichka is waiting for mom to come to bed with her. Then it will be warm. And where she doesn't quite understand, the resonant and mysterious ripened among them. At first Darishka thinks it's about a plant, but then realizes it is not. Waft toward her, churning her sleep like oars beating in water. When I was ripened with you, it happened to me too, rises Grandma Tatiana's voice, a contralto. And Darichka wishes desperately that her eyes weren't so heavy, and then she could grasp what it is they're talking about, but she can't. All she gets is a tinge of something unattainably mysterious and solemn. So solemn that mom has forgotten about Darichka and says something to Grandma Tatiana in a lowered voice, while tossing one new log after another into the stove to keep the fire going, like in Darichka's fairy tale rhymes, burning high and bright. And Grandma goes on, and I knew... I'd have a girl because I had a dream. And that's it 
from page 683.